Hey everyone, welcome to another Top 5. Now, right before the update drops, I want to make this list just in case any of the new Porsche cars that are coming end up being elite. Because I don't want to push this list back another two months or so. So, let's just get it over with. Top 5 best elite cars ever in the game. And again, if you missed last video, the elite car system is a brand new system that was introduced last year. Basically, you can now fine tune all the stats of your car, some cars that is. And basically, some of them are overpowered, some of them are really bad with this. Today we're going to be looking at those that are really good. They utilize the system perfectly, and they perform top tier with the system. Without further ado, let's get into the list. Coming in at number 5, we have the Mercedes AMG GT3. This car had to be on here because, one, it's been B-King for pretty much now a year since, you know, came out the last summer update. And now here we are in June. One year later, it is still very fast. Although there is now the MP4 a the GTC4 Lusso, the Holden's still there. The MG GT3 is still a dominant B-Class car. And you can get it for credits. And when you elite tune this car to 1692, I believe, is the final rank when you elite tune. It will go as fast as the Holden, but then it will keep its acceleration. Very nice. And then its nitrodurations. Alright. So. Comes in at number 5 because the handling is kind of sloppy and um, obviously some other B-Class cars are able to catch up to it in some tracks, but it's still a very decent car. And uh, the only thing I would not recommend this car is for is for multiplayer. You want to get this car Max Pro if you're going to aim for it. So I suggest that, especially if you know you want credit only cars, this is a great one for you. Coming at number 4, we have the Monster Land Shark. I know you guys aren't expecting this, and a lot of you have probably forgotten this car exists, but, you know, of all the monsters that are in the game, all of them are pretty good, and this is uh, the best monster in the whole game. It is an absolute beast when it's Max Pro, and it beat the Tryon, I think, in many tracks if you were driving it correctly, but unfortunately, it only lasted about two weeks when one Aston Martin Vulcan dropped in the store and just destroyed everything. Everyone kind of forgot about the Monster Land Shark but is still a beast and also for credits if you need a good car for credits this is definitely a good choice especially if you don't have the 60 force induction V8s that are needed for the Tryon I would highly recommend getting this car if you want a good credit S class car that is competitive one thing to note is that uh, if you try this multiplayer you'll probably get wrecked by Vulcans which is why it's at number 4 but nevertheless it's a very good car and it deserves to be in this list Coming in at number 3, we have the Sabaro Sparta. This is a pretty new car, it was just released this current update, and it is the C-Class King currently. I really do not like the looks of this car, but performance wise it is very good, it's a monster. You know, you got a really good nitro duration, really high top speed, the highest we've ever seen in C-Class. And that really pushes it over the edge in the Elite 10 system, although it goes pretty fast without it. But it's like the Renault Alpine with worse acceleration and an elite tuning. That's pretty much what you can compare it to. Anyway, the Sparta, its main flaw is handling. So it can't drift very well, and the turning's not too good either. But basically, your acceleration is fantastic. The nitro and the speed are beyond good. And that puts it at the sinking at pretty much every track except for Sector 8. And that's our number 3 spot. Can we get number 2? We have the Mercedes-Benz SLK 55 Special Edition. Now, I know you guys are expecting this card on the list, but the reason it's number two is because it has a lot of flaws. Number one, when this card was released, it was initially 12,000 tokens. It later adapted to the blueprint system, but it was a very expensive card and it was only offered actually in a few cups, but I won it in the cup where it was free try. And I am so glad that I won it because this car has number two capabilities for a good reason. Now first thing is the obvious thing, the rank. It starts off very, you know, small, actually like D-class level for starters, but then it's an A-class so it's got to go up and it goes up pretty much a thousand rank points to become the highest rank car in the game when you elite tune. And what happens when you elite tune it? The top speed is a rocket. It's the fastest car in the whole game when you count for real speed. It has no fake speeds. So that thing you see at the top of the speedometer is 100% real. It is going that fast. 
And when you have speeds that fast, you can nearly break the game. But when you're going that fast, that's where its flaws come into play. Number one, the acceleration. The pre-patch version of this car had dreadful acceleration. I believe it took 11 seconds to reach top speed. Now it takes 8 seconds to reach top speed. But that's still pretty bad when you compare it to like the Tri-N. Number two, the handling. The handling is not very good. And when you're traveling at that high speed, the handling can kill you. It's not like the Devel 16, but it is really hard to handle when you're going, you know, over 330 miles an hour. Number three, the nitro duration. It's not very good, and you need to use this with an extra tank if you're going to be going in cups with this. Like a single tank, for the most part, you aren't going to do good with this. The MP425 is a much better single tank car for this. And the Chevrolet Grand Sport's also a pretty good beast for single tank too. But when you look at that top speed, it's number two, and it is such a beast in A-Class. And who knows how long you will survive, because that speed, especially when you're in two or three lap multiplayer, very overpowered, and that's our number two spot. Before we get into number one, we have to list some honorable mentions because there's some elite cars that didn't make the list, but they really should be mentioned because they are pretty good. First honorable mention is the BMW M2. This was the free car from last year, and this is actually a really good car for multiplayer tunes. And what's weird about this one is that if you actually decrease elite tuning on some of the stats, it will actually help you more because your rank will go down and you'll get matchmaking in better ranked cars with a high speed. But there are some flaws, like you could still get beat by an SLK Special Edition, obviously, and um, you're still vulnerable when you drive this car in multiplayer. The next honorable mention is this Corvette Grand Sport. It's also a new car, and it has very fast speed, and I was expecting it to replace the BMW Homage completely and challenge the SLK Special Edition, but right now it's kind of a disappointment, because the acceleration's bad, the handling's bad, the nitro duration and top speed are really good, but the SLK is too much, and then the BMW and MP425 are a bit more balanced than this car, so that's why it's an honorable mention here. The final honorable mention is the Mercedes-Benz CLA 45 Racing Series. This car was the C-Class King for about half of last year, and it was a pretty fast car, but obviously the Subaru Sparta is a bit faster, but it was still pretty good. It had nice nitro duration, nice acceleration, and it was fast enough to beat the almighty Mitsubishi Eclipse, which ruled for a very long time. And now, unfortunately, it's replaced by the Sparta and the Renault Alpine, but it's still a pretty good car, and if you're going for that Mercedes collection, it's definitely not worth a waste. It's definitely not a waste of credits. So, I'd pick this up if you like Mercedes racing cars. Coming in at number one, we have the Mazda RX-8. The OG, first ever elite car added to asphalt. And this car is still broken as hell. I mean, when we were first introduced to this car, we had no idea what the elite system could do. And this car went fast when you put on elite tuning. And to this day, it is still very fast. Not a single D-Class car has been able to reach this car's speed, even with elite tuning. Cars like the Buick Avista have not been able to reach it at all. The Mazda RX-8, for an entire year and then some time, dominated D-Class. And I know I still don't have this car in Windows because I'm waiting for a new king to appear, but I'm scared that it might not ever appear. This car is definitely worth the thousand tokens that you have to pay for this car because it is an absolute monster it has amazing acceleration amazing handling amazing speed the nitro duration is manageable even with single tank it might not be the best but the speed and the handling and the acceleration really make it stand out and you will always do better than the other d-class choices even like the donkervert where it has really good nitro duration it will speed that on every track this car is definitely worth the tokens and this is a must-have for anyone who wants to try in events. And that is it for our top 5. Kind of a bit of a long one because there's a lot of good elite cars in this game. But hopefully you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys are hyped for the Porsches as I am. I can't wait to see what they're going to perform like in the game. And thank you guys all for watching. I will talk to you guys later.